former Pitt player now on the bench as an assistant coach, Celeste Taylor. When they win, she's really contributing, but when they lose, lose, her numbers are well down. Yeah, her numbers are down, and they need more offense from Celeste Taylor on a consistent basis. And you know, she's found her stride in conference play and then hit a little bit of a lull. It's time for her to find it again. Last four games, Celeste Taylor has missed 11 of 12 threes. So Pitt in their road gold uniforms. They have never beaten Duke. 0-15 all time, including two losses last year. Kennedy Brown, one of the co one of the players, excuse me, that Carol Lawson wants to see more from offensively gets the first basket. Yeah, Kennedy Brown, Elizabeth Balagoon, and Celeste Taylor really needing more from them on the offensive end. Carol Lawson was telling us they've struggled. They've got to find a way to put the ball in the hole. Team with just two losses in the ACC, Florida State, and then they lost to North Carolina a couple of weeks ago in Carmichael. First shot by the lefty freshman point guard, Marley Washington, is off the mark. Duke is a team that loves to push pace. Here's Dave Wilson. Almost surprised when she misses these days. Rebound taken down by Malia Johnson. And the finish on the other end, Amber Brown, the captain, the reluctant captain <laughs> from Monroe, Louisiana, averaging a career high in scoring this season. Well, Pitt known for this zone defense. They're really going to throw a lot of different looks out of this zone. And Duke, their initial play in offense, looking for that diagonal, looking for the seams. They've got to continue to find ways to get paint touches. That time trying to get an inside just to a paint touch with Kennedy Brown. Bounced away. Shot clock winding down. Day Wilson buries it from the outside. She has now hit 10 of her last 19 threes. That's over 50%. She's a player who can score in bunches, and anytime Duke needs a bucket, they just got to put the ball in her hand. She can create her own shot at any point. Sophomore from Toronto got off to a relatively slow start numbers wise, but has really turned it on. Brown, tough shot, and now Day Wilson getting it in the open court. Reagan Richardson just fumbled it out of bounds. The shot clock's winding down. There's a little bit of a paint touch. You get two defenders on you and find the open player. And that's just not a tight enough closeout. When you have Cheyenne Day Wilson, she can flat out knock it down. You got to be a little tighter. And look at the numbers for Shy as her uh, teammates and friends call her. ACC games turning it up a few notches. A good ball fake. The ball just wouldn't go in. Amy Hayford for Pitt, number four. Pitt's going to play a lot of players. Here's another number four on the other side, Balagoon. That's a great look. Again, that same seam that they got Kennedy Brown on. The diagonals are there. And Carol Lawson talked to us about finding the angles, finding the seams, different ways to attack the zone. Pitt's going to have to make an adjustment on that backside. Inside, and then there's that collapsing defense that Duke is known for. Johnson with the miss, the block by Balagoon. Open three is it drained by Malia Johnson. Sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio, their best three-point shooter. This is a pit team that has been in many games in ACC play. They've had typically one poor quarter that has lost the ball game for them. But this is a team that had high energy today in shoot around. They, they, they are coming with, with a lot of intensity and a lot of confidence. A very positive attitude considering they've not won a game since December. They went 0 for January. Bucket put in by Gabby Hutcherson. He's lost nine straight games, only 10 in the ACC. Day Wilson knocked down the three, wanted a foul. That didn't come. Shy already with a couple of threes. It's last win December 21st against North Alabama. Good play by Celeste Taylor, and the ball goes over to the Blue Devils. Well, we mentioned Celeste Taylor's offensive struggles, but she always brings it on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, she is 
really the head of the snake in terms of defensive intensity and energy right here. Perfect backside help. Great timing, able to go up and get the block. Coach Lawson talks about her, calls her her best defender, which is saying something on this team, which is ranked among the nation's best in several defensive categories. You gotta have somebody that sets the tone in terms of their energy, their effort, their attention to detail, day in and day out, and for Duke, that's Celeste Taylor. But that was not a good pass. Again, trying to force it into Kennedy Brown. That's the third turnover for the Devils. Hayford guarded by Taylor, who cuts her off. Amber Brown grabbed as she made a move to the basket. Reagan Richardson whistled for that foul. And shooting foul, Richardson leaves, and Vanessa DeJesus, who's a really solid backup point coming into the game. DeJesus is the super sub, but she really comes in and gives this team anything that they need. If it's scoring, if it's leadership, if it's, if it's defensive prowess. Brown with the miss. There's DeJesus with the ball in her hands. Started the first few games before Duke pulled the plug on our season during COVID a couple of years ago. Coming off the bench. Taylor working the baseline, but a terrific block. Richardson got a hand on that. Richardson, an Ohio State transfer. Hit only a couple of transfers on their team, which is unusual in this day and, day and age. Duke has 11 transfers on its roster. Day Wilson, drainage. There's just too much space, Kay. I mean, she's coming into this ball game, the last four games, shooting at 50% from the three-point line. You have to close the gap. You can't let her have that much space. And it's got really good length on the perimeter. You got to use that length. Get your hands up. Make it difficult. Ray Wilson has hit all three of her threes tonight. Amber Brown, nice pass to the basket, and she just couldn't get it to go. That's the kind of stuff that can kill a team like Pitt. Yeah, you got to take advantage of your opportunities. The margin for error is really slim when you're playing teams at the top of the league. When you're playing anybody in this league, really, you got to take advantage of those opportunities. Taylor has now missed 11 of her last 13 threes. Shot outside, well short by Hutcherson. Richardson gets the ball on the other end. And Hayford, who is from the Netherlands, played on some Dutch national teams. Ball on her hands. Another shot off the mark. The ball bounces into Kennedy Brown. Nothing easy. I mean, this defense really disciplined to the details, the scouting report, forcing tough contested shots. Extra pass and then another block. Gosh, Gabby Hutcherson with two already tonight. And I think Celeste Taylor passed up a shot there. Maybe in her head a little bit that she's struggling from the floor. Those are ones she's got to take. That was a good look for her, but she passed it up. Hayford sets up. Brother got it knocked out of her hands by Day Wilson. We take our first time out when we come back. Closer look at Amber Brown, the senior who almost didn't even make it to play her first game as a freshman. Gatorade Fit. at Duke. Amber Brown is a senior at Pitt, but were it not for the person on the right, Dr. Tilly Sheets, their academic advisor, 
she might not be there. Amber came to school. She's from Monroe, Louisiana, and in the summer was taking a public speaking class and actually wrote a note saying she was going to drop out of school. And there it is. And that's her handwriting. Amber yes. A.B. Brown is dropping out and at the bottom. That's Dr. Sheets. I, I don't think this is necessary. Yes. <laughs> and so Dr. Sheets did not let her, talked her out of it, and is going to have that framed and presented to her because Amber Brown is going to graduate in May. She will be the first from either side, her dad or her mom's side of the family, to ever get a collegiate degree. And all she's done is not, <laughs> not just play every game of her career, but started them all. And Pam, she almost dropped out of that public speaking class, and she's a communications yes. major, so she's, she's come a long way. And that's what she said, you know, I, I didn't have the best upbringing and coming to Pitt and being exposed to all of the things that I've been exposed to in basketball and academically you know, has, has really helped me and position me, and she has been the leader on this team, and you mentioned quite reluctantly the leader. Yes. But as you watch her interact with her teammates on the floor, you can see why. The way that she communicates, she's constantly communicating to them on the floor, on the bench. Yeah, they vote for their captains, and she actually told her teammates, don't vote for me. <laughs> because she doesn't, she said particularly, she doesn't like going out when the captains meet at the beginning. She tries to push other people to do it. She tells them not to vote for her, and they vote for her anyway. She That's how much they respect her. That's right. But it's a, a great story. Congratulations to her. She's going to graduate in just a few months. And perhaps be a grad transfer and play somewhere next year. People, it's amazing, right? Somebody like Dr. Sheets and other people can really kind of help change your trajectory. Amber the major component by doing that. Absolutely, the impact one person can make in, in a young person's life. Oh man, so that's Taylor. That's what we've been used to seeing. It's an eight nothing Duke run. And so that's Taylor really struggling. Offensively, the loss to Florida State. She missed eight or nine shots. All of her trees. But Pitt, they have not scored in over five and a half minutes. And a throw away. To Jesus, Taylor gives it right back. And then out of bounds. That's terrific hustle by Dejanette Harris. Fourth turnover for Duke. Harris now coming off the bench for Pitt. Had been the starting point guard until this year. And now is a switch over to the off guard position. And, and she was quite honest with us and said she wasn't really comfortable with it at first, either playing the two or coming off the bench. But to her credit, she mentioned whatever this team needs. You know, I believe in, in Coach Lance. Uh, I believe in, in his vision. And I'm going to do whatever it is that helps our team be successful. Senior from Youngstown, Ohio. Missed some time at the beginning of the year. That felt good. Coming off the hands of Leah to King. She knocked it down to break the drought. <laughs> Several opportunities for Duke. As the first quarter comes to a close, the Devils up 15-9. Pokera Lawson talked to us about the fact that she wanted them to play more in transition. What a great find by DeJesus. And Celeste Taylor, composed, gets the two. Threes in the first quarter. Pam, she's just explosive offensively, but the confidence that she's playing with, walk up, run up, threes, knocking it down, loving it. We saw her explosive ability offensively a year ago. Struggled a little bit in the non-conference, but has found her way offensively for this Duke Blue Devil team. Has hit now 12 of her last 21 threes. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you from Durham, North Carolina. Duke taking on a pit team that has yet to win in the ACC. Cheyenne Day Wilson, there you see it. Ashlyn Jackson just committed a foul for the Devils, but yeah, three threes. I was surprised that that's her season high. Her career high is eight, which she said in a, a last year as a freshman, eight in one game, but she has really been spectacular. And when we had Duke very early in the season, Coach Lawson said, 
I'm not worried about Shy. I never worry about her. And she was right not to. Well, she's just a ball player, and she, and she figures it out. And you know, she's a player who really does whatever this team needs in order to be successful. Now she needs everybody else on the floor with her to, to elevate in terms of their offensive efficiency. Because yeah, defensively, we see what they do. Nia Heidi comes up with a nice defensive stop. Heidi did a good, very good job on Elizabeth Kitley. Kitley only had one field goal as they lost here on this floor last week to Duke. And this is one of those possessions where the ball's not moving quite as well for Duke. And he subs in right now. And we get down to the end of the shot clock, really happy to work in half-court execution. And Kara Lawson talked to us about this. Want to stay out of half-court execution as much as possible. And that was a great job of breaking down the D and the drop-off pass. Jordan Oliver, one of the players that Coach Lawson wants to get more from. This is a bench that scores a lot of points over the season, averaging about 16 points per game off the bench in conference play. They recover. Just when you think you might have an extra pass and a shot. That's Mia Heidi closing out on a perimeter player. It's a really good defensive effort and energy. You know, offensively right here. This is Cheyenne Day Wilson. Just that lane line drive against the zone. Nice drop off and finish by Oliver. And Oliver, a player that's the best slasher on this team offensively, according to Coach Lawson. Thought she could find some holes in the pit zone. when you're playing his own is find the seams and whether it's penetrating passes or dribble penetration being able to get the ball into those seams force the defense to collapse and then make the right decision after that collapse good fake to get to the basket and across the court for the three buried by avery strickland a true freshman from knoxville tennessee Avery Strickland coming off a game where she was two for four from the three, had 13 points against Boston College. There are a lot of young players who are getting experience on this pit roster. And we're going to see five new players at the next whistle. A complete line change for them. Like only Dave Wilson missed from the outside. Coach Lance White has been working on some substitution patterns. That's another good look. Another great cut, as you alluded to. Again, finding the gap, find the seam in the zone. Great extra pass by Heidi. And Jordan Oliver with the bucket. Timeout with Duke up seven. Gatorade fit. Kara Lawson talked to us about Jordan Oliver having an impact in this ball game because of her ability to slash and move without the basketball. We've seen it on display against the zone, finding the open area, making herself available to the passer. She finds the seams. She cuts hard to the rim. Her teammates have been able to find her. Five assists on eight made field goals for Duke already, and Oliver making an impact off the bench. Jordan Oliver, the transfer from Baylor, did not play at all last year, recovering from an Achilles injury. Leads this team in assists and has a terrific assist to turnover ratio. But adding some punch off the bench. Still only a seven point advantage for Duke. Now on Celeste Taylor, Lance White in his fifth year in charge of the Panthers after 15 years at Florida State. Before that on the immortal Marsha Sharps Staff at Texas Tech and still trying to right the ship at Pitt. Well off the mark, but an offensive rebound. Taylor with some good defense on Johnson. Not sure what the whistle is about. Brian Brunette, Fatu Sissoko Stevens. Jules Gallon and our officials. It is a shot clock issue. And they are sure enough. We had some clock issues earlier last week as well here. Carol Lawson. 
her third season. And in charge here, our former colleague. And we'll to see if it hit the rim and if it should have been reset. I think it hit the backboard. I think it hit the backboard as well. Doesn't look like it hit the rim. And Celeste Taylor, number zero, one of 11 transfers on this team, played at Texas for Vic Schaefer, where you have to be able to play defense as well. Coming up next, more basketball. At, when we're finished, Diamond Johnson, number 15, NC State, taking on Tony Morgan and Georgia Tech from Atlanta right here on the ACC Network. There's a good one going on not far from here right now. Virginia playing at North Carolina. That's right. Good net at 10 Eastern. Going to take a look back at the entire night. Every night in the ACC is some really, really good competition. It is in Carolina, a team that's on a nice little win streak right now. And Coach Mox certainly turning things around at Virginia. North Carolina had that slide. Remember, they were on a long losing streak and now following it with a big win streak. There's a whistle on the Oliver Drive. And a foul on Pittsburgh. Marley Washington's. Neither team has shot a free throw yet in this game. Oliver took steps on her way to the basket. Turnover number five for Duke. And now they can set up the pressure. This is always a, a concern for any team that plays the Devils. And Pitt really working on their press break today and shoot around. And up until this point, had done a really good job of taking care of the basketball, but you got to stop the ball right there. Balagoon gets an easy two. Balagoon with the steal and the basket. And this is really where Duke gets a lot of their energy. The press, turning teams over, getting out in transition. Well, they're not a team that really blows teams out of the water in, in, in terms of, of the score, but they have these runs. They wear you down with this pressure, 94 feet for the 40-minute ball game. Another turnover, Celeste Taylor. No foul on that play, but Kennedy Brown just took the ball away and stuck it in. Duke's first double-digit lead of the night. It's a 6-0 run this time. And now Pitt just throwing up some threes. Hutcherson with the miss. You wanted them to get the ball to Taylor? I wanted her to, yeah, I wanted her to pass that up the floor. Yeah. Kara Lawson wants him to play in transition and not just off of turnovers. And you see this pressure right here. Balagoon is really tough at the top of that press. She's long. She's got really good timing, able to get the steal. And in transition, Celeste Taylor off the mark and Kennedy Brown off of the offensive rebound. The part of, part of pushing the ball in transition, whether it's makes, misses, getting out of the net, is having a head up and delivering a pass. There are a lot of guards who want to over dribble the basketball, and one dribble too late eliminates a transition opportunity. Just that little second, right, can yes. mess up everything. So Pitt in an offensive slump right now. Andy Brown with good defense, but Hushardson was it able to score anyway. First year after playing a couple at Ohio State. Almost a takeaway. And I thought Richardson grabbed that on the, in the front court side and came over, back, over and back. Andy Brown gives him a second chance. Day Wilson probably should have taken the shot trying to Get one into a teammate, and now a foul on Kennedy Brown. This is a really good look inside. Good patience by Hutcherson, using her length to shoot over the top of Kennedy Brown. I like those shots for Hutcherson a little bit better than those long-range threes right now. If you're Pitt, you got to find a way to get high-percentage looks. 
Brown at 6-6. Now out of the game, Tidy coming back in. A two-lane transfer. Earning some more minutes. John Falk into single digits. Brown directing traffic. Swinging yes. around, and there's the three for Hayford. What a play by Johnson to save that possession. It looked like there was a miscommunication on the backdoor cut. Johnson able to just make a play to keep it in bounds, and Hayford knocks it down. Hayford had missed 10 of the 12 threes she had attempted this season before that one rattled in. Forcing it inside, Heidi able to save it. Richardson couldn't get the roll, but got the pick back. Those are the possessions you gotta lock up if you're pit. You really gotta take away that driving lane, and then if you get Duke to miss the first shot, it's tough to box out in the zone, but finding a body, discipline to the box out is key. Richardson gets it over to Taylor. See, Taylor's not even looking at the rim now. It's, it's a mental thing offensively, but you don't have to shoot it. You just have to be a threat to shoot it. She threw it away, and looks like Coach Lawson's going to take her out. So Ashlyn Jackson gets off the bench. For Duke. Those are two minutes to go in the first half. Pitt shooting just 27%. Short. This is that play where Johnson just does a good job of saving the basketball, saving the possession, finding an open teammate, and Hayward knocking down the three. And that's where you see this is the pit team that the, the effort is there, right? The, the, the competitive nature is there. You just can't afford to make the mistakes that they make because good teams compound that by making you pay with those extra possessions. Richardson charge. The second on the University of Georgia transfer. Great hustle by Harris to beat Richardson to the spot, to establish position, sacrifice her body to take that charge. Addition at Harris, one of the she's been in this building before, said she was playing an AAU tournament when she was about 13 and they came to this building, but no play on this pit team has played here before. That's incredible to know. It's cool to see teams come in like that. They're taking pictures, and because it really is a, it's really a cool building. Great history, but a throwback building. Harris will step back. Got it. And was fouled. Really good play by Harris. The step back, able to stay locked in on the shot, knock it down, and get an opportunity at the foul line. Okay, Jesus got a piece of her. We are about to witness our first free throws of the game, and we're over 19 minutes in. Harris, who scored her 1,000th career point in the last game against Boston College, gets the three point play. Pitt has scored 10 of their 20 points, half of them off Duke Turnovers. Right here, you gotta have your hands up. Be a little bit more active on D right now if you're Pitt. Make the passing lanes difficult. Jackson. Extra pass. Off the iron. Heidi got it taken away by Harris. And then. 
De Jesus got in the way. Johnson, or Ashlyn Jackson did not have numbers, but took the shot anyway. Tuesday college basketball men's doubleheader on the ACC Network and the ESPN app as Pittsburgh hosts Louisville at 7 Eastern and on to Charlottesville for NC State and the Cavs. Check that out Tuesday on the ACC Network. Pittsburgh, for the third straight year, the men went into the Dean Dome and beat the Heels. That was last night. The women's team for Pitt able to go and watch that game. And that is the end of a low-scoring first half. Duke's double-digit lead evaporated as they went almost three minutes without a score to close out the half. Duke leads it 25-20 as we head to the studio. Kelly Gramlich, Muppet McGraw, and Kelsey Riggs. At Pitt, seven different scores out of the 13 who played for them. Cheyenne Day Wilson was terrific, hitting all or three of her four threes in the first quarter, I should say, and then only took that one shot in the second. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White joining you from Cameron Indoor Stadium. Pitt has never beaten Duke in women's basketball. Trying to pull off the upset, and they start it with the turnover, and then everybody scrambles for it. Terrific hustle by King to keep it with the Panthers, but Kennedy Brown is behind the play and shaken up. Kennedy Brown with seven rebounds in that first half. To lead everybody, let's take a look at what happened. A little friendly fire from Taylor who came in and landed on her. Brown's gonna stay in the game. Kennedy from Derby, Kansas. And from Oregon State, was in the McDonald's All-American, the Kansas High School Player of the Year. And Carol Lawson pleads her case. This is crucial, this third quarter for Pitt. Well, you talked earlier about how Pitt is, you know, they're on 10 in the league, but they've been in most, if not all, of their ball games, but the third quarter has really crushed them. Yeah, they've struggled in the third quarter, finding ways to score the basketball and finding ways to get stops. And you know, this is a team that, you know, if you're in the locker room at halftime and you're, you're Lance White, you're talking about this. Hey, we have to come out with a high energy level, high attention to detail. We can't afford to have lapses. Come out attacking the basket right away. King. Junior from Washington, D.C. Foul on Day Wilson, that is her first. The two King. Both her parents are deaf. She knows American Sign Language has gone to some schools and there's a basketball tournament coming up. She's gonna go and communicate with those youngsters and something that's near and dear to her heart. Pitt is hosted an American Sign Language night as well. Deaf awareness night, they've had that the last two years. And King gets the free throw. Duke has yet to shoot a free throw in this game. Pitt now two out of three, pardon me. And Pitt's not a team that's gonna foul a lot playing this, this zone. Typically, if you're gonna foul in the zone, it's going to be off of an offensive rebound opportunity. We stay staying disciplined. Staying with the Devils. But the pace of this game is exactly where Pitt wants it. You know, Carol Lawson had talked to us about the fact that she wants to get the, the, the ball up and down the floor. Having to execute in the quarter court, no matter who you play in this league, is really difficult. And Pitt has the pace exactly where they want it. Mishima Harris picks up the foul for Coach Lance White. Goon back in the air and scoring. So the foul Goon, her second year at Duke and her third ACC school. Freshman of the year at Georgia Tech, then a couple of years at Louisville. Let's 
Tipped away by Celeste Taylor. Well, this is just too easy. You can't continue to back up when you're defending on the interior. You really got to try to hold your ground and force Balagoon to shoot over the top of you. And to Balagoon's credit, Balagoon's an undersized post player. And she does a really good job of utilizing her pivots, of playing with pace on the interior and getting some scores. And she's one of those players that Carol Austin said, we need her to step up and knock down some shots. Oh, that's a knockdown block by Heidi. Taylor, other side to Day Wilson, who decides to pull it out. Heidi in for Kennedy Brown, who's shaken up a little bit. Balagoon for three. She doesn't take a lot of them, but shoots them in a very high percentage. Yeah, she really does. She's selective. Every shot she gets from the three-point line is typically in rhythm, on balance, open looks. And that gets the lead up to nine. Day Wilson. Dangerous in the open court. That's a poor pass. Picked off by Harris. And it just could not be handled by King. This is a heck of a defensive play right here. Heidi does a good job of closing the gap, of getting in space, getting a hand on it. And then that leads to really good execution. And Elizabeth Balagoon knocking down a three. Yeah, Heidi, the grad transfer from Tulane. Top five in Tulane history for career blocks. Just got a good one here, as we saw. Jesus in to run the point for Duke. As Day Wilson sits down. Rebound off the foot of Heidi. And Celeste Taylor, my goodness, has missed five of her six shots in this game. And four and a half games in a row for her where her shooting has been off. And that's a walk as Heidi hit the deck. But again, to Celeste Taylor's credit, so many players let their offense affect their defense and affect the other aspects of the game. If you're not knocking down shots, you've got to find other ways to impact the game. And Celeste Taylor consistently brings it on the defensive end of the floor. She's always in the mix. She's very active. She continues to impact her team, even though she's struggling offensively. And at this point, it's a mental thing. And we've seen her be able to knock down shots. I'm sure she's in the gym trying to get shots up. And, and, but just finding a way to get an easy bucket, see the ball go through the bottom of the net. And we've seen her pass up some shots that normally she would take. Roshenowitz just took it away from Taylor. So this Taylor is the best defender on this team, according to Coach Lawson, and they have a lot of good defenders. Nobody there to get the board except Balagoon. Here's Taylor. Richardson. Tried to pass it off to Heidi, but instead it got all the way to the Duke bench. And again, I think overpassing. You know, an opportunity for Richardson to go to the rim. And, and Carol Lawson talks about this. You know, these are areas that we have to get better, where we've got opportunities, whether it's an advantage in transition or an opportunity like that, where you have an opportunity for a shot and you turn it over. You know, th those are miscues that, that you can't afford if you want to continue to to be a top team in the league at the end of the season if you want to continue to make a push in March when the NCAA tournament comes along. It's the fourth turnover of the quarter for Duke. And yeah, that was one of the points that Coach Lawson made in our meeting before the game. Hafer just committed a foul that they've been missing. Way too many shots they need to make. And as you said, that's something that could come back to bite you against good competition. And that's a big collision. Called for the foul. And Jesus. Baseline. Nice to Taylor. Those are the shots she needs to get right now. That's a great cut. De Jesus under control, poised along the baseline. Get you a couple layups. Get some steals. Get in transition. Get some confidence going to the rim. Seven nothing run ends thusly with the basket by Amber Brown. Games averaging about 14 points per game for the senior captain. He 
Zeus draws a couple of defenders. And another chancy pass in the paint that got taken away with Shenowitz. Looks up that lefty shot, he knocks it down. Marley from Fairmont, West Virginia, two-time West Virginia Player of the Year in high school. And she's a player who can score. I mean, as a high school senior, averaged almost 30 points a ball game. Who hasn't been leaned on heavily to do that here in her young career at Pitt. But I think someone who could absorb more of that offensive responsibility. This Pitt is a team that does not have a dynamic score. And the players talked about it. That's nice, under the basket and in for Hayford. Played on some Netherlands national teams. And Pitt hanging in. Well, in each of those situations where, where the unforced turnovers by Duke, not getting shots on the rim, shots at the goal, can hurt you. You, you let a team like Pitt hang in there, give them confidence. Taylor missed the three but followed it and got fouled. Pitts hit their last three shots. Well, this is terrific defense, great rotation in the zone, getting out in transition. Wassonitz knocking down the jumper. And then Hayford in transition. Pitts making a little run. Our next All Access, the ACC Life, very special one premiering Monday night. Take an emotional journey with ACC student athletes and administrators from every institution, from Montgomery to Selma, Alabama, highlighted by a march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Dallin Cup hosts ACC Unite, 7 Eastern, right here on ESP, on the uh, ACC Network, excuse me, and the ESPN app. Celeste Taylor at the free throw line where she misses her first one, 80% on the season. Oh no, I missed them both. Yeah, it's just a mental thing right now with Celeste Taylor. Everything looks a little hesitant. Everything looks a, a, a little structured, pushing, you trying to aim that, it. You wouldn't know that kind of a slump, would you? Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Gotta keep shooting it though. Hayford keeping it going. Game, a one possession game for the first time since Duke led 10-7 way back in the first quarter and another turnover. That's six turnovers in this quarter for Duke. Well, Kara Lawson has not been pleased with the way that this team has played over the last four games and certainly won't be pleased with the way that they've, they've played to this point here tonight. You know, Pitt really doing a good job of keeping themselves in this ball game, continuing to play hard, continuing to take advantage of opportunities. And Taylor with the takeaway. Jay Wilson's been silent since the first quarter, offensively. He's not really even looking for shots. But... Jesus finds one, hits the rim. And the rebound taken down with authority. And Leah Johnson. Trying to break a nine-game slide. They are 0 for 2023. Those are the mistakes you just can't have. You, you, you can't have those illegal screens, the unforced turnovers, the, the, the breakdowns in communication. When you're, when you're trying to win on an opponent's home floor, You've got to take advantage of every situation. Your margin for error is so slim. Give yourself a chance on the offensive end of the floor. And those are the things that have been hurting Pitt. During this slide, eight nothing run here. Duke has gone well over three minutes without a point. And Wilson bunks it off the and when you're in that kind of a, a slump, if you're Duke, you got to get that shot. You can get that three anytime. You can get that three off a driving kick. You can get that three off of an inside out. You don't have to take a, a one dribble, side dribble three. At this point, Duke needs a good offensive possession with a high percentage open look. That's the three. Yep. That's the one. Took a couple of steps and popped it. Yep, that's the one. 
The ball goes inside, outside, get a couple of paint touches, force a defensive ro rotation, and then knock down an open look. That breaks the drought for Duke and gets the lead back up to six. Inside two minutes to go in the third. Left open for the three and banked in. Shanice Lewis, the grad transfer from Maryland, who has had a career just riddled with knee injuries. Great freshman year at Maryland, but then has been dealing with that left knee issue. Rebound, long one picked up. Match right here. I'll clear that out and let her go to work on Kennedy Brown. Inside, boy, that was a pretty good look, but then Duke with the gift turns it right back over. At the middle screen and roll, there's a hard hedge by Kennedy Brown, but just a little bit of a miscommunication. De Jesus not understanding what the coverage is, and that's too much time and space. Lewis was able to knock it down. So inside a minute to go in this third quarter where Pitt is outscoring Duke by two. Jason Harris working on Richardson. Will step back off balance, left it short. Two bodies hit the floor in different parts of it and that's a step they got her boy this has been turnover after turnover in the third quarter eight third quarter turnovers for duke and only 10 points in this quarter Trying to use up as much as the clock as possible. And the ball, Lewis lost it out of bounds. Just under nine seconds left for Duke to score. Some full court pressure. And you want to keep him in front right here. You don't want to get beat in this full court pressure. Just use it as a contain. Hey, Wilson. Oh, a foul called with just under three seconds left to go on Harris. Foul puts Duke into the bonus. So a, a double owie for Pitt. And it's Day Wilson. Dale couldn't score, but Duke only up by four as we head into the fourth quarter. Dale Lawson's team, too many turnovers in that third, making up for a close ball game. Pitt still winless in the ACC. Let's talk about your dirty years. Field goals, and these are unforced turnovers, and there are times when you're playing against the zone. It puts you on your heels. You get a little too hesitant. You overthink things instead of continuing to flow in an offensive rhythm. Early in the ball game, a good job of attacking the gap, attacking the seams, ball movement, player movement. Since the first five minutes of the ball game, very stagnant offensively for Duke. Six of their last seven games, they've been under 30 points in the first half. There's another turnover. And those are the ones you, you just really can't live with. You know, valuing the basketball, understanding how each possession matters. I mean, this again, this is a pit team whose back is against the wall. They're over in conference play. They're looking to get their first win. 
They're not intimidated. They have been in these ball games. And if you're Duke, you've got to find a way to lock in and focus offensively and take care of the basketball. Almost forced a turnover. A very contested shot for Amber Brown. Duke is a team that is separated from a lot of opponents in the fourth quarter. They are very deep. They go 10 deep. They'll pressure you, and we'll see if Pitt can. Pitt also plays a lot of players, and another giveaway. It's two in the first minute of this quarter for the Devils. Well, it puts so much pressure on your defense to be perfect. It really does, and, and fortunately for Duke, Pitt is handing it right back to them. Blocking foul coming up. But when you think about playing other really good offensive teams in this league, you can't afford to put that much pressure on your defense that you have to get a stop every time down the floor. Duke has got to find a way to shore up, to be better in their half-court offensive execution. Well, Celeste Taylor heading to the free throw line where she was 0 for 2 in the first half. It's Thursday night, so you know what that means. We got doubleheader basketball, and then nothing but net when it's all done. Highlights and analysis of every women's game in this great conference tonight. Kelsey Rakes, Muffin McGraw, and Kelly Graham will be joining you. Some great contest going on. And remember where Duke's playing on Sunday, folks. They're at Notre Dame in what will likely be the battle for first place in the league. Duke coming off a loss to Florida State. Nice follow. Pitt unable to get that offensive rebound. Back-to-back -back misses from the outside. Maria Johnson active on the offensive glass, trying to get extra possessions for Pitt. I think this is a big possession right here for Duke. You've had time to talk about it. You're coming out. Pitt's going to change it up just a little bit. Go to this half-court trap look. Can do give themselves an opportunity to get a shot off. Just give yourself a chance to get a shot off. Duke for the game shooting 36%. Pitt at 29. Every opponent has been held under their season scoring average by the Devils this season. That would be no different tonight. Felt like Balogun passed up a shot. And an opportunity on the drive. Amber Brown couldn't get it to go, but she'll get free throws. Fouled by DeJesus. Brown as Dave Wilson comes back in originally committed to play at Memphis but then coach Lance White showed up we talked about it earlier in the game she didn't know who he was she didn't know what Pittsburgh was where it was and she's resilient yes she's from Monroe Louisiana and still hasn't bought a coat <laughs> she says I'll wear a hoodie she doesn't wear the knit hat slides she won't, won't wear boots that's just that's just crazy because it gets cold in Pittsburgh. Yes. Darn cold. Got one out of two from the line on that trip, but we had a really nice conversation with her. Celeste Taylor, nope. Day Wilson, nope. Chased down nicely by Brown. subs at the next whistle. That was a good play to run in this match against Cheyenne Day Wilson, but didn't look at it. Shafak dying. Defense by DeJesus, but then Wyshenowitz went in there to tie it up, and now five subs come in for Pitt. Another full substitution for Lance White, alternate arrow, gives the ball to Duke. Well, Pitt's had their chances. 
They've had chances offensively. They've had chances at the foul line. Have not been able to take advantage. Several opportunities to dent into this lead. Got as close as three. The Hazers with the much needed three. Now Duke comes with the pressure. Lewis inside and King her turn to go to the free throw line. Vanessa De Jesus just hits timely buckets for this Blue Devil team, and that was one right there. Great job by Celeste Taylor to find her in transition. Very steady player. The, the numbers aren't going to knock your socks off, but you're right. She gets timely shots, very steady on the floor. Free throw line. Coming into this game, fifth in the ACC in rebounding, leading her team in that department. Another drive on the left, gives it off to Heidi, who got thumped. That was a great play by Celeste Taylor. The lane lines are there, attack the seam, force the rotation, nice drop off. Exenor with the foul. And, and this is the difference, you know, early in the third quarter and early in this fourth quarter, Duke passing the ball around the perimeter. Now attacking the paint, forcing rotations, getting drop off and open three point shooting opportunities. Thursday night, so doubleheader night here on the ACC Network. Coming up next, Diamond Johnson and number 15 NC State taking on Georgia Tech from Atlanta, right here on the ACC Network. We're in February, just one more month to go, and then the tournament in Greensboro. It's going to be a heck of a tournament. No dominant team this year in the ACC. Nobody you're going to look at and say, hey, they're the best. And the tournament should be exciting. Heidi with another block. A Wilson three. Missed everything. This is that danger time, you know, for, for Pitt. Duke wears teams down. In the fourth quarter, they're able to typically pull away, make runs. by Exenor, one of two players from the province of Quebec on this pit team. And Exenor exits after that shot. Lance White gonna talk to her before she sits down. Pitt has missed eight of its last nine shots from the floor. Shooting, as you see, just 27% for the game. Taylor finally gets one to go. Well, Celeste Taylor's done a, a really good job of staying in the ball game, of taking some shots. We've seen her pass up some, but in this fourth quarter, She's been making plays for others. She's taken a couple of jumpers. She's got herself to the foul line, got a layup or two in transition. And this is a terrific rhythm three. Stepped up, no hesitation, and knocks it down. Well, kudos to Celeste Taylor for continuing to, to fight through it. You know, when you're in one of those slumps, you, you've just got to find a way to get some easy scores. She was able to get a, get a layup. She was able to get a couple of opportunities at the foul line, even if you know, they didn't go, the first couple didn't go. Then she was able to knock, knock some down and step up and knock that three down with confidence. Because it's hard, it gets in your mind. 
And also a credit to her that she's continuing to do what she does best on the defensive end of the floor. She's not letting it affect the way that she can impact the ball game. Another block, this time by Kennedy Brown. Taylor. That was a pass. That was a pass. That was, if that would have gone in, that was definitely a pass, right? So Duke with a 10-point advantage. We'll take another quick timeout. There are all kinds of products in this world. Are all in for all time. Come for it all. Oh, uh, the happy dance in camera now because they have a 10-point cushion. 10-point cushion. We remind you Tuesday college basketball men's doubleheader, Louisville and Pittsburgh at 7 Eastern time, and then NC State at UVA, University of Virginia. That's coming up Tuesday on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you in a kind of a chilly, rainy ugh, kind of day outside, but it's been kind of chilly in here yes. too. Especially for Pittsburgh. Steph White, they're 0 for 9 from the floor in this quarter. And they've had opportunities. Taylor continuing to play her entire body off on defense. Yeah, Pitt, remember they got to within three late in the third quarter, and since then they missed 11 of 12 shots, and Duke has extended its lead. Winston Gandy, one of the assistants for Duke, said last year, Celeste Taylor, a very good defender, called her the ambulance because she would come in and rescue all of her teammates when they were out of position. <laughs> She would come in and save the day defensively because and now everybody else is picking it up. But, you know, Taylor offensively struggling and, as you mentioned, just continues to play hard on defense. And that really is a credit to her because so many players let their offensive game affect everything. They're not making shots. They don't do anything else to impact the ball game. That's, yes, and that's a credit to Celeste Taylor, the impact that she still has on, on this ball club night in and night out. But if, if you're Kara Lawson and if you're Duke, you know, you've got to really be concerned about the way they are offensively. She spoke to us about it. Uh, she, she is concerned about it. And now it's just, you know, can, you're going to keep yourself in games because of your ability to defend at a high level. But finding ways to get over the hump when you play really good offensive teams, you've got to be able to score the basketball. You've got to be able to execute in the quarter court. Taylor, drive and a foul. And Coach Lawson talked, when she did talk, she says, she, Flat out said, we have not played well offensively since the loss to North Carolina, which was their first in the league. And that was back on January 19th. Since then, they beat Syracuse. Beat, she even included Virginia Tech last week. When they won a week ago here and held Kitley to just one field goal. And they are coming off a loss at Florida State. And that's a concern, especially we talked about Sunday. They're going to South Bend. Yes, you, you go into South Bend. You know, a team in, in Notre Dame that can really score the basketball. And, and again, you put so much pressure on your defense to be perfect every possession when you don't give yourself a cushion on the offensive end. And, and we're not talking about, you know, not making contested shots. We're talking about not giving yourself an opportunity to score the basketball because of turnovers, not taking advantage of advantages in transition as Hutcherson knocks down the three. First field goal of the quarter for Pitt and not having multiple players. This is a team that needs multiple players to score the basketball. Balagoon has to be a consistent threat. Kennedy Brown has to be a consistent threat. Cheyenne Day Wilson has to be a consistent threat through 40 minutes. Celeste Taylor as well. Reagan Richardson, everyone has to contribute. There's Brown, good hesitation. That was one of those plays that was very good execution. Seeing the seam, that was the exact same play they started the ball game with. Finding that diagonal angle, good seal by Kennedy Brown. Back to back threes for Pitt. That time it was Amy Hayford. First three years, just kind of a role player on this team, getting more playing time now. And it's only a seven-point yes. advantage, it's right? seven-point game, so you, you've got to be a little bit more active in this zone. If you're pit, certainly you don't want to foul, but have some energy. Get, get active. Hands up. You've got a little bit of momentum. Hutcherson knocks down a three. And then Hayford, back-to-back -back threes. 
this is really where, where you've got to lock down on D and you've got to bring some energy. I'm talking about the, the woes for Pitt, but Duke has not scored. And 15 points in the first quarter was their highest scoring quarter of this game. Oh, nice. Well, Jesus with the finish. And was that Taylor with the assist? Sure was. Going back to that point of if you're not scoring, right, do other things for your team. Impact the ball game. And Pitt came out, they were pressuring, and again, seeing the seam, that diagonal against the zone is there. And heads up play by DeJesus to not come down. Taylor, five rebounds, four assists. She does have five of now Duke's 19 turnovers. But Duke under two minutes away from Beating Pitt. Team they've never lost to in women's basketball. Defense out on the perimeter. Taylor tried to sell a charge, didn't get it. Hayford with another basket. You want to see pressure? I want to see some pressure. It's a seven point game. If, if you want to give yourself a chance, you have to. Extend the game. You got to pressure. Got to look to foul. But, but too there. much. Yeah, too much time gets to come off the clock. And that's just inexperience at, at this point in the ball game. It's not. This is a team that's been close for three quarters, oftentimes. But that one quarter blows it out of the water. Now it's a seven-point game. If they don't have this in-game experience, understanding what do you do when you get that quick score? You've got to be up. Got to pressure. Got to know who to foul, when to foul. Terry Mitchell having a conversation. Location at Harris. He's a longtime coach at Marquette. He's been on the bench with Lance White here all five years. There's a takeaway. Duke pulls it out. The clock is their best friend right now. They're not fouling. Again, this is just the, those, those in-game moments that Pitt doesn't have experience with, and now it's too late. Yeah. Now it's too late. Yeah, I was looking at the coaches down on the bench, and they were telling them to foul, and then finally backed away because it was too late. Lance White wants a timeout. With an eight-point lead, Duke up. We'll take a timeout as well. the other workers' comp insurance. Welcome back to Duke. Let's take a look at the ACC standings going into play tonight. Nothing is final yet. And you see Duke and Notre Dame, the two, two lost teams. Notre Dame right now is at BC, leading by eight in the second quarter. Florida State comfortably ahead of Wake Forest. North Carolina comfortably of, uh, uh, leading Virginia. But right now, you know, Looks like Duke is going to go into that game Sunday in South Bend with just two losses. And that's going to be a heck of a game. Yeah. And of course, Notre Dame playing without Darm Avery, uh, but, it, but a team that can really light it up. Olivia Miles is terrific in transition. Sonia Citron you know, is really a, that, that steady glue player who does a little bit of everything for that, for that team. And, uh, and Duke, you know, again, when you think about this, this, this defense, you know you're going to be solid. You know you're going give to give yourself a chance. But they got to find a way to shore up a little bit more rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. That is the one and only time that Notre Dame and Duke will play in the regular season. Good defense. Again, Ashlyn Jackson, the freshman, got her hand in there. You come out of a timeout, you don't even get a shot. Don't even get a shot. How cranky would that make you it as a head coach? It would make me very cranky. <laughs> but, but, but again, like these are, these are the difference in these games for Pitt. When, when you're right there, and when you have a chance to get over the hump, you can't have these kinds of mistakes. You know, certainly looking for something specific out of the timeout. If it's not there, you've got to move on. Oh, so let's tell her, tough night at the free throw line. 
Just four of ten. And that's an 80% shooter shooting 40% tonight. Right, the Blue Devils. Taylor with the nice finish. is about to fall to 0-11 in the ACC, the only winless team in the league in conference games. Finish for Johnson. Well, Pittsburgh, this has kind of been what they've been doing. They get close, but they just can't get over the hump, and they fall 53-44. Was the Duke team